Hey everybody, welcome to Surface Level, creating a community where Black and queer folks are fearless in thought and curious at heart. I'm one of your hosts, Jordan, and today, Damon, Tony, and I are discussing non-sexual intimacy. Does homophobia limit Black men's ability to establish non-sexual intimate relationships? How does hypersexual stereotypes of the queer community impact our approach to intimacy? This is Bromance. Bromance. All right, so <laughs> today we're discussing a topic that keeps coming up, obviously. Um, it comes up in our small talk conversations. It comes up in our comments. It mm-hmm. comes up in our conversations. But um, it seems as though the community really wants to have a conversation around how to establish meaningful, intimate relationships without the sex. Oh. Um, but before we dive into today, to today's topic, um, Tony, we have a very special guest with us. So yes. do you want to introduce him? I will introduce him. And I'm, I'm just, it just made me think for a second. Like, do we have a bromance? Possibly? Maybe? I, I don't know. So. I don't know. If, based so. on your definition just now, we, have, we might have to look into that. We'll, we'll decide later. <laughs> so today, everybody, we're really excited to chat with Teron Beal. And for those of you who aren't aware, he has an expansive career in the music industry and as an artist and as a songwriter. And so he's worked with the likes of, and you probably know who these people are, Michael Jackson, uh, the Jennifer Lopez, Kelly Rowland, and Maya, amongst others. Teron was actually able to tap into other creative expressions and get behind the camera lens as a photographer, where he uses the art form as an exercise to explore the concept of non-sexual male intimacy. Again, non-sexual male intimacy through emotive portraiture. And so today, we're gonna get into some things (laughs) as we welcome Teron Bill to our surface level family. Welcome. Hey. Hello. What's up? Hey, what's Welcome. up? How you doing? On How you doing? On the West Coast. Yes, thank you so yeah, much for joining us. Yeah, we out here. <laughs> I'm so excited. I kind of wish I was in New York, though. I wish I was in the studio. So, but yeah, thanks for having me all the way out here in the, in the West Coast. Everyone in LA wishes they were in New York. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, I, I, it's, it's I, a thing, don't... right? Demond, don't start. We've already had this. We've already had this <laughs> argument. Don't don't start. All right. All right. We try to keep it cute and friendly. <laughs> well, look for the for the viewers. You can see the the West Coast SoCal glow coming through on Tehran's camera. Yeah. Um. But before oh, we get into okay. the conversation, um, I want to play a game with the four of us. So there was this <laughs> when, the, when the girls laugh. So right. <laughs> they, they thought some shit up. Like, what are we about to get into? No. So so there was this um viral TikTok trend that happened earlier this summer i'm not on tiktok and <laughs> it was this no it was this game that was called he's a 10 but um and so i i know we're going to spend this conversation talking about non-sexual intimacy but yeah. i want to talk about dating for a second during okay. this mm-hmm. game All right? <laughs> and so the game is i'm going mm. to um give a rating of one to ten for an imaginary man okay, okay. and i'm going to also say a trait that goes along with this imaginary man. And then you give me the new rating based off of how you feel like that trait impacts the initial rating. Okay. All Probably right. it sounds very complicated, but go with me. Mm-hmm. Tehran, you... I want you to answer first on all these questions. Okay. Do I got to? Because I got. I don't think I know the rules yet. I'd be like, you know, what am I supposed to do? Say it again. Say it again. What am I supposed to do? All, all right. right so I'll... <laughs> no, you're good. So I'm going to give a one to 10 rating on an imaginary man. So I'm going to say, this guy is a nine, okay. but he does X, Y, and Z. What's your rating? Okay. What's your new rating? Oh, so I can, I can either add or do, do. Okay, got it. Love it. Exactly. Okay, I'm ready. All right. So um, first up. And this ain't non-sexual. This is dating. So. <laughs> this is just dating. <laughs> okay. This is non-sexual. Okay. This was not in my contract. This is not, <laughs> this is not non-sexual. <laughs> this is non-sexual, but it's, it's romance. Oh, it is non-sexual. Okay, well, all right, let's all see. Right. you can date and be okay, asexual. So. Let's, exactly. Let's get into it. Exa- let us know, Damon. Let us know what the A it. means. All right. So the first one, he's a 10, but he's best friends with his ex-boyfriend. What's <laughs> this mm. new rating? Don't think too hard on it now. Probably 11. Oh, okay. okay. So it went up. Tony, Damon. <laughs> yeah. This, uh, this is really hard to answer without context, but I'm going to give him an eight. 
Okay, it goes down. Yeah. I'm okay. giving him an eight. It's best friends with his ex boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, possibly, maybe not. Maybe yes. I don't know. <laughs> Context matters, so we don't have it. So, Damon, you go. I mean, I think he's still a 10. Congrats. My, okay. My, my fiance is. Oh, you have a fiance. <laughs> I have, I have, oh, my, my, my breaking roommate, news. My, my roommate. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I wasn't so, ready for that announcement. I thought I was giving it a secret. Well, that, what, Girl. well, that's part of it, though. That's part of it. Like, I, I have a situation where, you know, I was in a relationship. The relationship was great. The relationship ended. And when the relationship ended, you're thinking, like, okay, that's it. It's a wrap. But um, actually, we became much better friends. And, it, I mean, it was just a, a wonderful progression of already a very authentic uh, wonderful connection. And so yeah. now I'm like, oh, if you can be big enough to kind of, I mean, now I'm saying like, I, I'm, I'm doing in the best case scenario, if they're still ex friends with their ex and it looks crazy, then I'm taking the score back. But yeah. I'm saying like, <laughs> I think that that's, that says something because relationships don't have to be transactional. It doesn't yeah. mean like, okay, once this happens, then it's a wrap. Like if you can go back and find the connection and find what, what made you align to that person in the first place and, and extend that, I have to commend you and add a point. Okay. Hmm. All right. Agree. I would have gave a seven. But let's keep moving on. I see. see. Um, <laughs> all right. So, Tehran. He's a six. Oh. He's a six. But he cooks mm. and cleans. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That's like an eight. That's like an eight for me. Okay. It's a new eight now. Okay. Yeah. Two points. Tony. Yeah. Um... You know what? I agree. That I would probably go for an eight as well because that definitely like ups the ante. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, I'm giving I'm gonna uh -huh. give you an eight for that. Uh -huh. I feel like I'm a legendary. <laughs> <That's a> <laughs> I'm gonna give you an eight. <laughs> <laughs> you did what had to be done. <laughs> you did what, what needed uh, to be done. I you still a six. I can cook my own meals. And if I really want somebody to clean my house, I can hire someone to do it. That's why you my sis. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, you are still a six. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm ordering out and I'm hiring a cleaner. So that we still got to deal with six, the six. It's a six. <laughs> um, Cooking right. is so intimate, though. It really is. Yeah, that's why I do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. All right. You probably poison me. Ciao. Tehran. <laughs> He's an eight. But he quotes City Girl lyrics as his Instagram captions. <laughs> Damn it. I don't like to judge, but if I'm being <laughs> honest, that's going to make it like a five. I don't like to judge, though. I don't like this kind of question, but that's just for me. Yeah, it's it's something I'm still dealing with. Pray for me. But yes, I'm a <laughs> later. Most, I mean, that's fine. Listen, we ain't going to pray for you. It's your truth. And, and I'm going to say, I don't like it either. I don't want you to be like, mm, I'm going to give you a six, child. What was it? Wait, it was a six already? Oh, you're going down to at least. It was an eight. Oh, so yeah. It was <laughs> I'll eight. Give you, I'll give you a six. <laughs> <laughs> come, come back harder next time. I want to uh, do this too. I want to do that. <laughs> it's, it's your that's what we're gonna do now just for all the all the games all is the this i want this no 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 yeah. wrong finger I'm oh doing, sorry oh, right, i was yeah. doing the wrong <laughs> there you go tony put all them thumbs all down right. <laughs> um, i like it i'm i was gonna pretend like i wasn't gonna be <laughs> judgmental but like it would stress me it would tire me it would it would, it would make be... me exceptionally oh. exhausted they were an eight yeah after a while. One. <laughs> the mom wow. would be over it. You are wow. out of here. I would have been sick as well. So I'm just like, wow. If I see cash at me in the captions, it's just like, I actually can't, actually. All yeah, right. I, I mean, can't. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. So he's a 10, but he takes 12 hours to text back. <laughs> mm. What is... <laughs> That was personal. Okay. Mm. Yeah, it is kind of personal. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling that. Um, again, I have to be in my truth. I don't hate. I don't like to say this, but you probably still a ten because it's like I want you to be busy. I want you to be doing stuff. Yeah, you're probably still a ten. Like if I understand it, if we, if we talk about it, if I know where you're coming from, like sometimes it can be the opposite reaction. If you already, if you always like so on it, like ain't you busy? Ain't you got something to do? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. So he was a ten, and so I'm a I'm a. 
no one's perfect. So I'm gonna give him a nine <laughs> because <laughs> I can I can understand under certain pretenses, but if it's something crazy, then we we might have to discuss it. But like, yeah, I'm gonna give you a nine. I'm busy too, and I'm not gonna respond immediately either. So therefore, mm-hmm. on to the next, Demond. Um, I think ten. I think people have whole lives that they live, and I don't expect that you need to focus on me as a part of your life. Jordan. All right now, Nene. Five. You need to worry about when, me when I text. When you, I text, if, we if, respond. If, 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 we I respond. Need, I, I need to be a priority. Twelve I hours mean, is immediately. crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, I'm going to do two more. That doesn't mean you're not a priority. All right. Um, he's a nine, but he doesn't own any books. Oh, oh, damn it. I don't like to be judgmental because it's like sometimes <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes you, ha- you, you in there to, to kind of help you you kind of in there to, to like you know teach people to read to, to help each other develop <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, not me <laughs> teach oh my god let me see oh I'm taking away like four oh. like I'm taking away like four points okay that's reasonable yeah so they were a nine yeah. they were a nine you should have said, so it's a five for you, Toronto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. If you don't have any, if you don't own any books, that's a big red flag. You know, I don't, I don't do a, a shit ton of reading, but I own some books. <laughs> so it might be a three for me. <laughs> to mine. We have a library in my home. So like, <laughs> I just, I just don't think there's alignment for us. <laughs> So, There's no future. There's a so zero. But whoever was using those city girl captions, they should hang out. They should. They should. They actually be a match made in heaven, mm-hmm. actually. And then they can make Straight TikToks together. Bag. They can make TikToks. First of all, people who read are also on TikTok. It's not just people who are illiterate and listen to city girls. I didn't girls. think they were illiterate. They, you know, they like digestible content. Yeah. Yeah. They like comes in, <laughs> in bite-sized yeah. videos with, with dances. <laughs> um, all right. Last one. <laughs> He's a Digestible nine. content. <laughs> Snackable content. Um, all right, oh. he's a he's a nine, oh. but he thinks Beyonce is overrated. Child, <laughs> and that's all the time we have this week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's he's still a nine. Okay. Oh, um, <laughs> Tony he's lost. A, he's a, <laughs> Tony is not inside of himself no more. <laughs> I'm not inside myself. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I need yeah. to process that because if you're a nine, you're a nine and you think Beyonce is overrated, I you could still be a nine, but I mean, we listen. I'm going to be at the concert and you're going to be home sad about it because you're not there. Yeah. I can't go. I can't go to the concert. Yeah. Absolutely yeah, no. not. Like, yeah. but we can still do, do not, everything yeah. else. Everything else might be really, you know, quite nice, and I'm okay with that. I don't need you to like everything I like. Demond. Uh, I'm just gonna say like seven or eight. Like take a little bit off, cause like, like I just feel like they're those people that like try to say stuff to to just be controversial. Yeah. And like typically when people get into this conversation about Beyonce, it's just like try. I want to play devil's advocate, and but I'm mm-hmm. like, you're making me tired. Break my soul's fire. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah, I mean. I'm going to have to drop it down to a 7-6. I think that if you think that Beyonce is overrated, I think that you're probably just an underachiever. Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. And that's that on that. And so my last question is for you only, Tehran. What are you curious about? Wow. Um, authenticity. Like, my journey toward authenticity, like, is I think that's my superpower, and that's I'm really pushing that these days. I'm really, like, standing on the premise that my intuition is unmatched that if i feel something i go directly running directly into that and and i'm starting to shun like what i what i used to think so that's what i'm curious like does it really work out if i really lean completely towards how i feel not what i think not what the trends are not what my engagement is on social media like if i really lend myself towards how i authentically feel will it work out and i'm curious about that that. fantastic um such a great thing to be curious about because we talk about that a lot on this show authenticity leaning into that what does it mean what happens when we all stop pretending um and so 
very on brand. <laughs> However, today we're going to get into some conversations, as Jordan mentioned earlier, about non sexual intimacy. It's a, it's a topic that I think a lot of people will would love to hear from us about. And as always, we like to bring in folks that will add value to the conversation. And so, Tehran, we know this has been your thing recently. So let's start here. Society often labels black male intimacy as inherently gay or non-heterosexual. How has that stigma impacted your ability to establish meaningful relationships with straight men? And I'm asking that to the group, not just Tehran, but yeah. I want us to have a dialogue about that. Who, anyone wants to go first? Anyone feel particularly moved to speak? Um, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can start. Um, I, when you asked that question, I, I was thinking about like one particular experience that I had. Um, so when I when I started at Howard University, um, freshman year, I had a predominantly straight friend group, mm -hmm. and we were very close. We did everything together. We had lunch together, breakfast together. We had the same classes. We were all like in the school of business, and. Um, it wasn't until maybe um, the end of freshman year that um, one of the closest people in that group came up to me and was just like, hey, are you gay? Mm. Because people are saying that they think that you're gay and they're saying that they think that I'm gay because I'm hanging out with you. And that kind of like shook me a little bit because um, – I would have never tried anything with them. Like <laughs> I wasn't out, but like I, I also just like really enjoyed the brotherhood that we all shared. And so I never was going to cross that line, but I also wasn't ready to come out. And yeah. it was, it sucked because I felt like because the campus sort of established and not the campus beyond campus society established this um, gay by proximity mm -hmm. construct. Yep. Um, I felt like I was burdening my straight friends by being near them. Oh my goodness. And at that moment, I decided to pull back from that friendship and involve myself in other things on campus and involve myself around a different group of friends. And so when I think about this question about um, being able to have intimate relationships with other men that aren't sexual, um, yeah, like I felt like that really impacted that. And I felt like I couldn't just be the homie. Because there was always this underlying thing is like, if the straight guy is the homie with the gay guy, then they must be doing something gay yeah. together. And so, yeah, I, I wasn't strong enough to push through that and talk through that at that time, being 18, 19. Um, but that, I think that that really impacted the way that like I sort of navigated my relationships with straight people. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me in yeah. terms of <laughs> like what do you do in that situation when you're not ready to come out right yeah, like right. it's just kind of like uh, am i coming out right now like you just right. asked me this question like i didn't prepare my like speech um mm -hmm. not that i had one but i kind of <laughs> did but it's just like bitch you had a speech right a little bit <laughs> <laughs> anyway demand yeah, or... you know i've talked a lot about my dad uh before he passed away and he was by the time I was an adult and came out to him, was exceptionally supportive. But, like, there was a journey to get there. Yeah. And I, I just remember, like, I've always been affectionate towards my mom. But I remember at there was a point, I, I can't remember, like, late in our time at Howard, right after we graduated, I can't remember. But I realized me and my dad, we didn't say I love you out loud. Oh. Mm. And not because I, I didn't know that he did love me. Not because I, he didn't know that I loved him back. Yeah. But just, like, the men in my family... That was just the timeline. It, it, That's it, what we, he gave. We didn't speak that way. I have, uh, we have five siblings. Four of us. Have, there are four brothers, mm -hmm. and like none of us said those things to each other. Yeah. And I remember, and and I think it, it actually no. Now that I'm thinking, it had to be after we left Howard. I remember being around like my queer friends, and then like the girls just say "I love you," <laughs> like like they're throwing out candy. Exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I remember I was like, why don't I communicate this? to the other men in my life who who I feel this way about. Um, and I remember I started saying it to my dad. And then he started saying it back. And it just became a thing. A, like a part of how we would say goodbye or how we would greet each other or how we would end phone calls. Um, and my brothers with this the same thing. Like I have three brothers. Um, one is also queer. Um, but 
but like our dialogue became a bit different over that uh, experience. And, and I think it, it's one of those things that, are, and like now that my, my father's not here anymore, it's one of those things I wish I had said it earlier. Yeah. yeah. I, I wish I had been saying it for 32 years, but or I would, couldn't talk when I was a child. Like 30 <laughs> years. And, and whereas like I got to say it for maybe eight, Mm -hmm. um and just thinking because like we were i don't i don't know how to how to phrase it but like afraid to say it or it just wasn't a part of how we spoke to one another yeah Yeah. um and and i think that there's there's so much power in words and the words that you choose to communicate how you choose to communicate with people um yeah that that was the thing that i that i that would just struck me as i was going through that question yeah that it's so funny how we, we all have different experiences mm -hmm. and interestingly enough like my dad was the parent who did show an out outwardly display of love to yeah. me he was the parent that was always like my son i love you like mm -hmm. and and wasn't it was unabashedly mm -hmm. and which is not typical for a black dad i i hear a lot of the same stories mm -hmm as you, Damon, where you don't really hear that. My mom was the one that never really said I love you. And I actually had a conversation with her uh, years later. I was like, we get off the phone. You don't say I love you. It's You always say, like, talk to you later. Mm -hmm. But I, I never questioned my mother's love ever. Mm -hmm. But I had a conversation and, and I came to find out that she didn't say it because my grandmother, her mother, didn't say it. And so it's just a, a behavior that is passed down. Mm -hmm. And once I had the conversation, now we do we do say that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I was glad that I like, you know, called it out because she didn't have the tools. And sometimes right. we have to be the ones to kind of bring that to the forefront. But interestingly enough about my father, like he didn't know who his dad was. And I think that he, what happened was the black women that were around him and during his upbringing poured into him and outwardly, like you said, a lot of the women mm -hmm. in your family they threw it around. And so I think that's just what he was surrounded by and that's what he knew. And I, that's what I received from him. Mm -hmm. But present day, I don't have a ton of straight male friends mm -hmm. that are close. Like I know straight male friends, I can have conversations with them, but I don't have any that I can like really run to and say like this is one of my straight male friends that I'm really like mm -hmm. Judy's with, so to speak. But when I do engage with a straight man who is comfortable in his skin, who is comfortable in his sexuality, it's really quite refreshing. Like I love to have a dialogue with a man who is a cis, you know, cis heterosexual man who is just. 10 toes down on who they are and don't get uncomfortable mm -hmm. to be surrounded it by in a gay environment or just by gay people or queer people. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, hopefully one day I get to have that experience. I would love to be able to call someone um, or a few people, you know, friends in that way that are straight, but I just don't have that yet. And I, I, yeah. I kind of, I hope that we get to address that on the show. Cause it's one of the topics that I want to talk about is like, the relationship between gay black men and straight black men because there's a conversation that needs to be had there yeah Tehran. so Tehran, what do, what's your take on that on this question here this is really interesting listening to everyone talk because um i kind of have the same feeling where a lot of my relationships became more meaningful with straight men when i first of all accepted myself a lot of times i was overcompensating you know, I was so, um, as, as, as Jordan was saying, I was just like, you know, I, I had heard stories, I'd seen situations where people were, you know, cool with someone straight and then maybe as their sexuality developed then that person kind of said that someone said something or people around them made a big deal of it and that person moved away. And that was like a cautionary tale for me. So I would always overcompensate. I would always try to go extra hard to act like I didn't care, which sometimes meant that I was, uh, it, I was, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, say like I was working out in the gym with a friend of mine that was straight or something. I would go extra hard to not spot them or, or to act like I, I, I didn't notice anything. And when I started getting to the point where I started being able to be comfortable with myself and comfortable with my own sexuality and comfortable with who I am and what I'm bringing and a sense of worthiness, like I'm an asset to anyone's, anyone who I'm in their life. 
-hmm. Like you, if, if you have me as a friend, when I walk in the door, help comes through the door. So when I started owning that, I, it meant that my relationships with straight men became more robust because of the fact that we were able to get past, you know, any preconceived notions about what sexuality or gender or any of that kind of stuff would or would play into uh, the way we treat each other. And we would just start to be like, actually, I fuck with you because this is how you are and this is who you've been and this is what we have in common and this is what our common goals are and our common denominators. And it just seemed like my relationships got better once I started when I stopped overcompensating. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. overcompensation moment, I think that is something that we can all relate to. <laughs> um, because we've all done it at some point or, or another. And it, it, it comes back time and time again until you finally get comfortable with who you are and living in your truth. To Ron, we, we kind of, we're here to talk about non-sexual intimacy today, but we also want to flip that on its head and poke a couple holes in that idea. And so the queer community is often stereotyped as hypersexual, and as a result, some members of the community aspire to that non-sexual lifestyle just to be able to prove people wrong that they can do it. And so the question becomes, do you think that intimacy and sex can healthily exist with people who are not our partners so we're having sex with people that are not our partners and still can intimacy exist within that and my, yeah. my so partner it's like, you mean like not my, it's more casual it's not my boyfriend it's not exactly so it's not someone that is necessarily we're not even a potential boyfriend just right. some we're just someone who you're just kind of kicking it with and spending time and then mm -hmm. spending more time with. <laughs> so, <laughs> well see that's the deal just to, at, at this point in my life i don't know i, I know it's possible but for me, I don't really feel like sex is good unless there is some type of intimacy. Like I can't really get into it and give you all my, all my, if, if we don't share something more than that. Now there was a back in the day thing where you get on an app. I'm not, and I'm not shaming nobody like do it. It's hot, but there's a thing where you get on the app and you're kind of halfway representing yourself and they're halfway representing themselves. And you met off two pictures of torsos without heads and you're kind of trying to be that thing mm -hmm. and i can see where that's cool but usually right after it's over there's like all that shame and all that foolishness comes in and i'm not really there no more so in order for sex to be good i i need to know something about you and i need to know that you you fuck with what you know about me and but, then it can be hot but uh -oh. Tehran, but that's the thing like you you so i guess you agree with the the concept that is like you can have intimacy with someone that isn't necessarily your partner. Like you can do that with someone that you're not in a, uh, in a relationship. We'll, we'll put that title on it. You're able to be intimate with anyone. Like it can be the bro that you were kicking it with. Y'all having a good time. Y'all getting to know each other. That's intimacy. That's intimacy. Spending time together, uh, asking each other about each other's lives, really going there and getting to know one another but then you also happen to be sexually attractive yeah, and I, you may do sexual things, but that I think that it, that's able yeah. to no, I think, exist. I think it can absolutely, like two things can be true at the same time. I say that a lot. Um, and I think sometimes, yeah. and I, I think I've said this on the show before, one of the things that I've always liked about our community is that there is a an experience with sexuality that is not heteronormative it is not um traditional um mm -hmm. and i think that sometimes there's this um desire to like desire to get t towards hetero heteronormative spaces within our community yeah um and i think that that's the, that's the part where any version of this feels a little icky for me sometimes mm -hmm. um when, when you get to the space where it's just like i'm trying to prove the fact that I can be friends with somebody and not fuck them. Or like, what if y'all are great friends and you do? Who cares? And like, that's the thing that that's, that's a good specifically question. with like queer queer people that like, in my journey at least, where I've been like, oh, that's fucking cool. Where like, we can have a moment that's like, maybe just fun and it's about exploring our bodies and so on and so forth that also can, can wrap 
and love on each other in a way that is intimate and it's just friendly as well. Mm-hmm. And it's, that's what I mean when I say like two things can happen at the same time. Like I have tons of friends that like we've had some type of experience that was physical, but like I can also pour. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Um, (laughs) I can also have an exchange with them that is not about that. And, and And I'm not having that exchange because I'm trying to prove that, like, now we have some deep connection. That's not about sex. I'm just having the connection with you because I enjoy you as a human. Well, and can the same can the the same be said for the opposite? Like you're trying to prove that you can have these connections and be sexual with someone and exist, you know, in yeah. a in a. Not, I think so. I, that's your, that's your life's work. <laughs> it, is, it is it is what I live to prove that you can fuck these niggas and be fine. I like listen. I'm, that, I'm that, here for it. That's my whole thing, and and, and yeah. But yeah, okay. I wanted to chime in on that word prove. Um, virtue signal to, you know, you do something to try to prove something. You do something because you want to prove this. I found in my life, anytime I'm trying to prove something, that's usually not my greatest good. I talked Mm -hmm. earlier about being curious about authenticity. My authenticity has nothing about proving shit. My authenticity is how I feel. So if anytime you approach anything, sexual, non-sexual, whatever, if you're approaching something from the idea of proving something to anybody but yourself, already there's a fallacy. So nah, I don't, I don't virtue signal. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I I don't. We talked about this a little bit. My father, I'm from the church. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of over the whole idea of virtue. It's like, Mm. no, who are you right now? Who are you really? And if you're signaling something or if you're proving something, chances are you're not being authentic and that's not your greatness. Nothing really good will come out of that. Absolutely. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Like if you like, the, the when you start to have to prove that moment, it's kind of like you already lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but I think no, I think for and like even a, y'all were talking about that heteronormative thing, like even that's a real thing because so much of this shit comes from us approaching our ourselves, our lives, our our relationships, who we're attracted to. We mm-hmm. approach so much of it with a sense of being unworthy, being less than. And it, and, it, and it permeates so many of our decisions. And it's like trying to explain water to a fish. You can't even tell because mm-hmm. you've all these images and all your, your society and every song and every movie and every TV show constantly regurgitates that what you are ain't right. So you naturally go and look. That's why I said earlier when you were like, the question was uh, if someone's a 10 and they take 12 hours to call you are they still 10 well that's a worthiness issue because i'm kind of like well yeah i don't want you to be too too into it i don't want you to be i want you to be busy there's some part of that that still kind of says like there should be things that are more important than me so i'm just saying like a lot of it has to do with the lack of worthiness a lot of it has to do with these images that we've seen over and over again and that that permeates who we're attracted to and that permeates the idea of virtue signal you know, um, I'm 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 queer, but they think we're hypersexual. So I'm gonna act like, you know, oh yeah, we're cool and we're friends and we don't do nothing because I'm trying to show something. Because still, there's some part of me that thinks that it's dirty or wrong. Mm-hmm. 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 That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think that this is something that I've um, struggled with a lot. I feel like Demond, we talked about it a lot too, where mm-hmm. I've been very church and state with like. <laughs> friendships and um my more intimate endeavors <laughs> um and and i i find that i i, I used to have a hard time letting those things intersect mm-hmm. and merge um and it's because i i feel like sometimes i feel like when you mix the two there's a higher possibility that there will be a negative outcome and whether or not that's true for everyone, it's stuff that I experienced. And so for me, I felt like that's been like a struggle. But I can say present day that I am becoming a lot more comfortable mm-hmm. with the idea of sort of just like an intimate, a sexually intimate friend mm-hmm. um, that, you know, I'm not expecting anything from them. They're not expecting anything from me. I still think that they're a dope person. They can still come around and kick it. And I might even tell them about somebody who I'm dating, who I'm really interested in, Mm -hmm. um, in a long-term sense. And that's very new 
for me. That's probably something that's happened like since the pandemic, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, like I think that before I just thought that they needed to be separate. And I think that this you, this this community is unique because the friendship pool is the same pool as your dating pool, mm-hmm. right? Everybody's mixed all up in there together. It's like, <laughs> wow. it's friend, I mean, friend wow. one day, like Bo wow. the next day. And um, yeah, for me, it's just like, how do you manage that? And I guess the, the, the answer is don't. <laughs> yeah, you can't right. manage you and can't just manage, people. manage yourself and being a good person. And yeah, that's it. But that took a while to get there. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's just it was the same thing with me with the pandemic. Like that's that's where the normalized non sexual male intimacy. That's where it started for me. Where I was in a relationship, the relationship ended. We were in a pandemic, and socially we were all truncated. And um, I was reaching out to people. I, I had social media. I was posting pictures. I was doing things. I was going to marches, and I was reaching out to people. And it was. I, I, like I said, part of it might have been my issue, but certainly I found that with other queer men, it was very difficult to approach even getting to know someone or, or reaching out to someone or saying, let's meet up without either them misinterpreting it or me, yep. you know, thinking that something might be some ulterior motives. And that's that's the reason why I was like, oh, no, this is a real thing because I'm at a point now where I need community. I need perspective. I need for there to be someone that kind of looks like me and kind of has similar pers- perspectives and experiences like me to tell me what they think without us feeling like, oh, so is this where it pops off? Or, oh, well, actually, I wanted to meet up with you, but I want to let you know I'm in a relationship. And it's like, oh, my bad. I wasn't trying to get at you. I really just wanted to meet up. We're in a pandemic. Let's talk. So that's kind of where I started being like, let me let me start showing up differently because yeah. I, I knew that what I see in the world is probably an, an indicative of like um, what I'm putting out. So I knew that it was hard for me to establish like non-sexual intimacy. And th- the word intimacy to me just means like what, what uh, Tony was saying earlier, to ask real questions and wait for the answer. And remember what they said the next time you talk to them. <laughs> Compliment someone. Let them know what you're going through. You know, let them know what's really happening. Get off yeah. the phone with your mother and have a difficult conversation about family and reach out to that person and be like, this is where I'm at. How are you with your family? That's intimacy. Intimacy yeah. is not this whole thing of like, how do I, how am I around someone and try to figure out how to navigate through the whole sexual thing? Intimacy means like, can we have intimate conversation? Can we have intimate connection? And it may lead to sex, hopefully better sex. And if not, we understand who each other is and who we, and, and we can be friends or we can start a business or we can never talk to each other again. But we we were able to connect on some real shit. Right. Now, pre- previously on this topic, my thoughts would have been completely different because I had always reduced being intimate as something that you only do with a partner. Mm-hmm. And sex is something that only happens with a partner or a fuck buddy. And what I realize now is that there are levels to intimacy and sex. And I'm for for one, I'm intimate with my friends all the time. And that was something that I used to think was weird. I used to be like, me and my friends don't touch each other like that. We don't, what is going on here? <laughs> like, I don't understand the caressing moment that's happening. And nowadays I'm slapping girls' butts. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm cuddling with my friends. Like, I'm doing all the things that are intimate, but as friends, it's not really sexual amongst us because we have that relationship, but it took me a while to get there. But when it comes to sex, I can confirm that you can healthily have sex with someone that is not a partner Mm -hmm. because I've tested the theory personally and I've, (laughs) I've, I've, I, you know what, I, there's a case that has been made for that being able to be a thing that happens. And I'm like, okay, now at this point I can say we're all adults. And so I do think that you have to get there because a certain level of maturity is required, but it's possible. Yeah. Most of the sex I've had has not been with partners. Most of the sex I've had, you know, a lot. I mean, I'm trying to approach it differently with the whole normalized non-sexual male intimacy, but 
you know, a, a lot of times it's like you, you doing the fuck buddy thing. And if it works out and you have a couple things in, in common, then you kind of be like, oh, maybe we actually could do something. And I used to always approach it the opposite way. Like, fuck, 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 fuck. Oh, hey, you, let's spend a couple months together. Fuck, 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 fuck. And now I'm starting to approach it like, yeah, now I'm starting to- Wait, 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 wait. How, like, how'd that go again? <laughs> Hold on, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. I gotta, I gotta, I have to digest that. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Oh, we got something to comment. That's what fuck, it fuck, seemed fuck, fuck, like, fuck, fuck. that's what it seemed like. Like, I'm of a certain age and I've been through it. I've done it. And it's just like, nah, there's so much of, uh, you know, this whole DL lifestyle that I used to be in, but there was a whole thing that seemed interesting about acting like you were only available for sex. There's, there was this thing that seemed hot about seeming like you were emotionally uh, unavailable, emotionally truncated. That seemed hot, like, you know, so it was always fuck, 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 fuck. And then, oh, here, here I go again, I'm saying it again, yeah. But it was always <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. And then like, oh, actually this is working out. Let's, let's see how we can make it work. But mm -hmm. again, sometimes it was like, I didn't establish enough non-sexual intimacy at the beginning to where when the fuck 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 would subside it'd be like who are you really what do we really have in common and mm -hmm. we didn't have a real strong foundation to stand on but now nah, i think you do more sex with non-partners than you do with partners that ratio is very different for me it's like way more non-partner sex than partner sex interesting mm -hmm. Pray for me. Y'all pray for me. Pray for me. <laughs> pray for us. All of us. All four of us. <laughs> no, I think um, just thinking strategically with maybe Jordan's prayer, so we can start with you. Oh. Um, how do you handle maybe if a platonic friend introduces sexuality into a relationship? Are there boundaries you've set up for yourself to make this work a bit easier for you or a bit maybe less messy? Because it seemed before you were concerned about it getting too messy. Um, yeah. But like... How do you handle these instances or exceptions? Or I mean, I think in the past, um, I've I found that like I would build a intimate non sexual relationship with mm -hmm. someone. I would be like, oh, this is great. Like we're we're building a friendship, and then I would feel like certain sexual energy from that person, mm -hmm. and I would tell them, I'm not into that, and then they would disappear. And so I think that think. over time I've built like this <laughs> negative sort of reaction to speaking up for myself mm. because I felt like, and I really hope this doesn't come across the wrong way, but I think that a lot of times when I meet gay guys, I feel like there is an attraction first. Mm -hmm. And so it's very hard for me to decipher if somebody wants to be my friend or if somebody's trying to get in into a romantic situation with me. And I feel like oftentimes it ends up being romantic when I just really want friends. And so what I found is that when I speak up for myself, these people disappear and then I don't have the opportunity to make friends. And so for a while, I felt like I would silence myself and try to prolong that uncomfortable conversation because I'm, I'm like, maybe they'll catch the clue. Maybe they'll like catch the unspoken clues and they'll just like know that this is the friend zone because I'm not reciprocating. Um, but I think recently... I mean, I just have to be more... Ten toes down. Yeah, it's got to be... Like, it's like, at this point, I really don't have the free time <laughs> to um, continuously do Ring Around the Rosie and beat around the bush with people. Child. And if I feel like mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. is, like, flirting with me mm -hmm. or trying to give me sexual energy when I'm trying to keep things platonic, I just let them know. And I think that um, I try to make those boundaries clear sooner so that we can get over it sooner whether that means you vanish into thin air and i never see you again mm -hmm. unfortunately r.i.p to all the friends who i didn't want to date but like <laughs> they were never friends. they were never friends i know that's the sad yeah. part because i thought that we it's were just, actually becoming friends it's not because it's, it's, not it's, sad. it's, it's universe, actually you it, you cannot plan. possibly be sad about when that people show when, you who they are when that's not something you even want you you often know, talk about and, having no time to spend with people spending major time with minor people and i think that that's not something that i, think I know i mean it it's, as it's a gift it's, I, it's a gift yeah, i get it it's, it's <laughs> half glass of like full has half no that glass is running over yes i think no seriously <laughs> when people when people opt out of your life 
they weren't they didn't good in the first place yeah good like that's something that i think maybe like is not even worth looking at as like a missed opportunity it's something worth looking at as wow i dodged that bullet yeah wow let me actually I'm in, whatever time that exact whatever time that i was going to invest in that let me invest it in the people in my life that are pouring into me yeah uh, and i think that's more of like how at least i would look at it and I, I hope that like you can get to the space where like you don't feel like oh i've missed out on the thing you miss out on shit y'all fuck that yeah, I mean, I feel this like, is all, I feel, a, super, I this is all a superpower. It's all a superpower. That's what I'm saying. Like, ultimately, this reveals the truth. There's, there's never a problem with seeing the truth. You know, sometimes we have expectations or, you know, especially now with social media and we're all entrepreneurs through our creativity. We want people to like us because it's part of our brand. It's part of our fan base. It's part of the people, our foot soldiers that ha that help us help us to get the, the message out there. So a lot of times I engage people specifically like on social media. I engage people and I'll go back and forth and then it'll, it'll turn a little, they'll start saying things. And I'm like, OK, cool. My thing is my whole fucking platform is non-sexual male intimacy. So I have no problem at all telling a person like, this is where it is. This is this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm at. To be honest with you, there was a time where when I first started the uh, the platform and really started, you know, presenting myself this way, I was celibate because I really was like, let me just take that shit off the table. And I agree with you that some part of it became like virtue signaling because that would be a thing when I would do a talk, I'd be like, as a matter of fact, right now I'm celibate. And my thing is like, well, <laughs> yeah. Cause it's like, I so, sounds this, like I one of my friends. <laughs> I live this, I believe this. On this before, podcast. Right and it's like, you know what I mean? oh, wow. Uh oh, oh, hey. So there's a part, there's a part of me now that's like, now nah, you just tell people what it is. And again, as, as you're all saying, like they, you reveal your truth and they show you who they really are. There are 9 billion people on the planet. If someone can't deal with what you're, if someone can't deal with the meal that you put on the table, then we have lovely gift bags at the door on yes. your way out. Yes, Hello. God, right put the plate down. on the yes, table. God, but, you know um, what? <laughs> you, it's so the they still talking about you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, put the, you got to get to the, the plate. Mail I, to just, go plate. I was a step ahead. No, but I like it. I like it. <laughs> as it relates to this topic, though, I think that handling making, you know, when you have a platonic friend, that things become a little bit more like, what are, what are we? <laughs> I think it's case by case. Like, generally, I don't engage in sexual activity with a platonic friend. And I've only really had one instance where that, that I can recall, at least, that I had a friend that was platonic and that we were non-sexually intimate and that led me to be like hmm mm -hmm. I, what hold on now i like this yeah mm -hmm. when we cuddle it's nice yeah Make it nice you know i i i enjoyed that and i was like well he touched me, me there he kissed me there he kissed me there he touched me there he touched me there and i was like we actually had a conversation about it. Like, should we? And it was, it never, I think that it would happen is what's supposed to happen because I do think, you know, I would like to keep that person as a lifelong friend. And I don't know if a, a relationship would have actually worked out, but sexual things, I was like, I could, I could be into that with you. And like, it wouldn't be a thing. I would actually be okay with it. So I think that I'd like to make exceptions yeah. um, when the feelings are mutual. But if they're not, I don't want to play those games. But I think there's also value in having direct and clear conversations. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the thing Always. that like, doesn't yeah. happen sometimes. People just like go with the flow. Things devolve into shit. Yeah. And like mm. we, we had discussed like, oh, is this what you want or is this what I want? Do those things align? Do they not? Yeah. Like where are we with them? And I think that's the value in the scenario you just explained that makes it different from what happens in a lot of these scenarios where people just like go with the flow until we've we now we're over the waterfall. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, sometimes, seriously. And, sometimes, and sometimes it's not even the flow. Sometimes people are just going with what they've already seen. So, mm. you know, this is the deal. There was a way talking about that whole heteronormative, like homophobic, white supremacist way I was thinking before. Like there was a way where I didn't know how to approach people unless I was trying to be, act like, how you doing? I didn't even know how to, 
I didn't even know how to present my my artistry. I didn't even know how to present my 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 point of view without there being some kind of like, yo, so what you doing after the meeting? It, it was it was very it wasn't good. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's not even about like, you know, people going in a direction like it's a natural progression. Sometimes people are like, wait, this feels good. We're cool. We get along. We live in close proximity. Should we have sex? Should we be in a relationship? I like the fact that you actually, Tony, that y'all communicated and talked about it because mm -hmm. sometimes sex can fuck shit up. Yeah. You know, so, sometimes you can be in a relation, a friendship with someone that you like, I want to be friends with this person forever. And you have too much to drink and some shit go down and it changes the dynamics. 100%. Not always, but Not always. it's great to have the communication to make sure that 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 won't happen. Yeah, no, we definitely talked about it. And it was nice because we we had the conversation and we both realized that this is Not happening. That. Everyone around us saw it happening, but mm -hmm. it was nice to like have the, the dialogue and just be like, I too you know saw what? It. <laughs> let's keep it. Let's keep it. <laughs> I know exactly. What I, you're wish I, about right now. I wish I was there. I wish I was there. I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> I'm in New York. You'll we'll, see. We'll, it. we'll talk about it. Maybe after, uh, surface I'm up after, after dark. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. Um. So then I would let's kind of wrap up here. So present day yeah. as we talk about demonstrating uh non-sexual intimacy in our relationships with both straight and queer men um how are you doing it how are you finding ways to 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 share yourself jordan um i think that with queer men like i'm pretty mature in my ability to express non-sexual intimacy like we hug we give a kiss on the cheek when we like greet each other like we ask each other how each other's days are going. We talk about each other's lives and what you're working through. So I don't think that I have any um, deficiency when it comes to establishing intimate relationships in platonic environments with gay men or queer men. With straight men, though, that's a that's a that's a learning process, mm -hmm. but it is getting better. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I think it's important to not feel like. I need to take the onus on that. I think it's the straight people's responsibility to step the fuck up. Um, because I asked my straight cousins how, you know, how their relationships are going and try to get into a deeper, like, understanding of what's going on in their lives. And I feel like they're getting there with me, too. Mm -hmm. Like, my cousin just came up for um, him, him and his girlfriend had an anniversary. They came up to Harlem. Um, I went out to lunch with them and he was asking me who I was dating mm -hmm. and he followed up with those questions and he like this is new for us like this is somebody who I grew up with like since I was born basically mm -hmm. and to see his growth and his comfort level and just like his level of respect for just me as a human being has evolved so much. I've also established some really strong relationships with just straight people who make space for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel like a lot of times when I'm interacting with straight men, they'll avoid conversations that lean into my sexuality. Mm -hmm. When it's just like, you're not gay because you're asking me how my dating life is going. Right. You can actually just be interested in how my love life is like is, is evolving. Because you care about me as a person. Right. Because you care about me as a person. And that's what we're talking about in our 30s. Mm -hmm. And so I have a couple of straight friends who do that and we have very meaningful relationships. And like, we, I can talk to them about the girls they're dating, they can talk to me about the guys I'm dating and it's not weird. And at no point, no matter how long the night goes or how many drinks we have, no one's worried about anybody crossing lines. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for me, I take the lead of the straight people who are around me. I'm not forcing myself on straight people. The straight people who want to be a part of my life and make space for me, I will make space for them. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of the direction and the approach that I'm taking. Yeah. Okay. Well, you oh, know, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I need you to bear with me for a second because oh, 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 we, we have a statistic. A late card. Because, no, I have, I have a, a story. <laughs> yeah, you, this one came very late this in the came game, late. but it was oh, here. Man. I saved it for this moment. I came across an article, and bear with me. Yes. Came across an article on racebaiter.com that said, Why Black People Need to Explore Non Sexual Intimacy. And it deals with this person's relationship with the idea of touch and having lived through and witnessed physical, sexual, and emotional abuse and how that's conditioned them to be preoccupied with controlling their body at all times. So then they go on to say that they're actively involved with 
loving their friends. Their friends are their truest, deepest, longest standing loves. Our contact, presence, and connection with each other is incredibly intimate and our touch is sacred, especially because it has been used as a weapon to fuel America's economy. And lastly, they went on to say that white supremacy and cis heteropatriarchy encourages us to have selective redistributions of our intimacy, touch, and care that are reserved specifically for sexual partners and family members. And in order to thrive, these systems must invalidate intimacy and romance of other connections, especially those of single individuals. This for me Ooh. said a lot. Oh my God. That's my next tattoo. That's my next this tattoo. This for me, the whole thing. This I for me yeah. said That's my next tattoo right here. No, that for me, <laughs> that for me said a lot because it's so many constructs that are around why people feel the way they feel about intimacy. Mm. Yeah, and and you don't even realize how it's working on you, mm -hmm. and right. a lot of us don't. And so for me, my quality. Well, my my love language is quality time spent, and so that shows up when we talk about the ways in which I'm demonstrating non-sexual intimacy. I'm showing that by simply reaching out to my friends, by simply right. holding you accountable to your goals, being a cheerleader for you, going out for drinks or dinner, and, and really catching up. Or it also shows up with you know me be me being a better listener. Um, and that I think is important, which is one of my goals for this year is just trying to like be someone who can just be a listening ear for my friend, be there for a life changing event, take care of a bill if you're going through something or complimenting you on a job well done or simply something. just saying you look good today, bitch. Like you slayed. I got a bill. You can I'm take going care today. Of. You can take care of some bills. <laughs> We both last on to that. I was just like, oh, Tony, not, Tony not, paying bills. Not, not that bill. Okay, <laughs> student loan forgiveness over here. <laughs> Pray we'll do some, some, but some no, man, I want people to go like that that article and I had to read it all because it was important. That's and I didn't wonderful. I didn't think about this from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. it drives home like kind of a lot of what we're talking about today. Yeah. I mean, it's exactly everything you're saying, and I I love every example of like how you make people uh, feel this is what intimacy is make someone feel seen and make them feel heard let yeah. them know that they exist so like what you said like you 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 do compliments you 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 recognize where they are in their life you share your own things when we we're talking about the idea of like straight people um us knowing everything about their relationship and they're not knowing nothing about our relationship it's mm -hmm. like we have to be accountable for that shit. you know yeah. you teach people how to treat you so if you're in these friendships or you're in these relationships and they seem one-sided, that's your fault. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think the thing that I thought about with this question was maybe a little more practical, mm -hmm. not more practical, but just very practical. I thought about the last couple of years and how I built relationships and deeper relationships. And I found that FaceTime was one of the most powerful things that I've discovered and explored in the last few years. I, it, it's, it was the impetus for the deeper connection I have with my partner. I think talking to a lot of my friends, I, I think there's so much power in being able to look someone in the face and in the eye and ask how they're doing. Just because I think on the phone or via text message or like all the things that we curate for social media. Wait, um, when you yes. say FaceTime, are you talking about the FaceTime? Are you FaceTime. talking about FaceTime on the phone? Yeah. Yes. Oh, got you. I didn't know if you meant like in person. Okay, go ahead. Well, that too, but like during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah no, no, no. What, well, what I'm saying, because at this point in our lives, we have so many friends that, that aren't based in New York. Right. So I'm saying, what I'm saying is that there's value in being able to look at someone, even if digitally. Yeah. And I think that no, that is sure. something that we weren't doing before. If you if you FaceTime me not at all. on a random Wednesday <laughs> I didn't night, use that at all. I would think that some you had hit a wrong button and something <laughs> was happening. Yeah. Like like you right. did today? Yeah, like I did today. I FaceTimed you all by mistake earlier. I was walking <laughs> what into the, the fuck? I didn't mean to do that. Intrusive. Right. It's so intrusive. <laughs> exactly. It's so intrusive. It's like it's in there. Yeah. Exactly. Whereas now I, I, I even like my straight friends, my queer friends, I'll just like pop up on them like, "Yo, what's really going on?" Yeah. Because like when you text someone, they'll like they give you the shortest answer so we can stop not text all day. Emojis. When, exactly. With when, the when heart. we're on social media, it's it's curating the best parts of our lives and we're most happy now. But when you pop up on someone or and not even maybe just pop up, but just even if you're scheduling in like especially like like a lot of the the, the men in my lives, like my I have I do have actually a lot of straight friends from either college or just in, in my life generally and being able to just like look someone square in their face, like you, you can't lie then. 
Mm-hmm. And and I don't mean lie because people want to deceive, but people don't want to share. And it, I, I've found that that tool and being able to use it throughout the pandemic and now has been something that has been very valuable because it, it removes the physical piece of it for the queer people in my life. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I can't fuck you on FaceTime, kind of. Um, but there's, there's options. Re- there are options. There's those little but generally, um, but there? There, there's less of an option. That's what I would say. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, y'all are disgusting. Um, no, no. But 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 my point More being, I think that it's meant a lot for the relationships in my life to be able to look people in my, in the face, no matter where they are in the world, no matter where we're locked away or not, um, to to just be able to have some level of value and intimacy, and really, at the like to what Tarama was saying, making people feel seen. That's what that's what this whole fucking show is about. So people, so people, face so I'm. So, so you need to cut someone check because you got engaged based off of a, a, a old nasty <laughs> evil FaceTime. <from> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> a, a sickening wow. FaceTime. Over wow. and over and right. over again. I'm For hours wow. and hours so and wow. hours. We are oh. now going oh. to, to thank our fantastic guests for coming along today. Uh, to run, uh, for the people that want to learn more about you or find out more about your art and your work, um, how can they find you? What do you have coming up next? Anything you want to share? Oh, I'm working on a book. I'm working on a book. Oh, wow. I'm so excited about it because it's going to be pictures and the 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 lyrics of my songs because I wrote so many songs um, when I wasn't out. And so I would write these songs about my love for Black men and I would hand it to some strong woman like Maya or Jennifer Lopez or someone to sing it because I felt like the world wasn't ready for it. And now I'm going back and owning it. There's something amazing about photography and social media. Like I, I found my tribe. And so mm-hmm. now I get to go back and reparent that that Tehran that didn't feel like he was worthy to show like where the inspiration for his art was coming from. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm really excited about it. That's why conversations like this are so important because I'm like, yo, y'all feel the same way I feel. That's how culture changes when you can look at someone else and go, oh, you too? Really? I thought I was the only one. So this is, I'm, I'm moving through the planet and finding like my tribe. I'm excited about it. So tehranbill.com and I love Instagram, maybe too much. My Instagram is at Tehran Bill. Maybe too much. <laughs> Thank you. And that is all the time that we have this week. This season, we're raising money for the Ali Forney Center, an organization committed to protecting LGBTQIA plus youth from homelessness and empowering them to live independently. One of the ways that you can help is by joining our service level small talk conversation on tuesday august 23rd small talk is a live audio platform where you can join intimate conversations with us 100 percent of the tips that we receive will go directly to the ali forney center for details on how to rsvp for the small talk discussion visit surface level and remember stay curious